Okay, class, so today we're going to be learning about visible light and how it absorbs, reflects, and transmits light. Remember in class we were talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and how it goes from gamma rays all the way to AC circuits. And it goes from very small wavelengths to very long wavelengths. Visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's from 400 nanometers to 700 man nanometers in wavelength. Each color has a different wavelength that we see, and it falls in the rainbow colors, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, or violet. So this is how you measure wavelength. The top of the peak is called the crest, and the bottom is called the trough. And how you measure it is either from the top of one crest to the next, or from the bottom of the trough to the next. The closer that they are together, the higher the frequency. The farther apart, the lower the frequency. So how does light absorb? Well, when, light, when a light ray strikes the surface and energy is transferred to the surface and creates heat, that's what absorption is. Through absor absorption, heat is made, and the way that heat is made is the atoms in objects start to vibrate when something hits it. And if the frequency of the light matches the surface of what it's hitting, then it absorbs it. So, why does black get warm? Do you think? Because the light is matching the surface of the frequency? Yeah, kind of. Black gets warm because when things are black, usually it means that all of the light is being absorbed. Not reflected. So when things are absorbed, it gets warm. So on a hot day, when the sun is coming down on the blacktop, it's because all of those atoms are getting excited in that blacktop, and they're vibrating and creating heat. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so how does light reflect off of surfaces? Well, reflection is defined as when light bounces off an object, as simple as that. When... Something reflects, there's the angle of incidence, which is how the angle hits the surface and how it's coming in to the surface, and then the angle of reflection, which is how the light bounces off of the surface. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence has to equal the angle of reflection. So this diagram shows kind of how it's laid out. So you have the sun, for example, and say that the surface is like a black top. So the sun comes down and the light rays are coming down and the light rays that are coming down are called the incident rays. And that measure is the angle of incidence. So once it hits the pavement and bounces off, that's called the reflected ray and the angle of reflection. So as you can see, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. There's also different kinds of reflection. You can have specular reflection, which is off of a smooth surface, or you can have diffuse reflection, which is off of a rough surface. So this shows the reflection of light and how things can be reflected in different ways on different objects, depending on how they're made. So, for example, here's specular reflection coming off of a smooth surface, and you can see that the blue rays match the red, red rays pretty well, and so they kind of reflect at a really nice way. The diffuse reflection are on rough surfaces, and so you can see that the blue rays are coming in, but the red rays are what are reflecting. The angles are still the same as you can see though because they still match each other. Mm. It just bounces off different ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Okay, so based on what I just told you about specular and diffuse reflection and what they mean, can you think of some examples? Um, Let's start with specular. Specular would be the rays going off of a basketball court, outside basketball court. An outside basketball court? Would be an inside basketball court, too. What about a mirror? Oh, yeah. A mirror would be a good example of specular reflection because it's a really smooth surface. Yeah, now, diffused reflection is mostly all types of reflection because most surfaces aren't perfectly smooth. Hmm. So, what's a good example of diffused reflection? Um, what about a... I can't think of anything off of a rock. Yeah, off of like a pavement with some rocks on it would be a good example. Oh, okay. Because it's not smooth and it's not perfectly flat surface, so light isn't going to bounce off it perfectly. Mm. Does that make sense to yeah, you? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so next is how light is transmitted. So the definition of transmission is light goes through an object or surface. It doesn't get absorbed and it doesn't get reflected, but rather gets transmitted. Hmm. There's three different types of transmission. There's direct, diffuse, and selective. In direct transmission, no change takes place. No change in frequency, no change in the quality of the light, Nothing. It just passes right through the object. Hmm. Diffuse reflection is when light is redirected and loses some of its quality. And selective is light goes through a colored object. Hmm. And this will make more sense when I give you some examples. So let's go to that. Direct transmission is, an example would be like through air or glass. So when it goes through air, nothing's acting against it and so it kind of just stays the same. Hmm. Diffuse transmission would be frosted glass because when it's traveling through frosted glass, it's going to be diluted a little bit. It's not going to be as bright as it was when it went through before. No. Selective transmission would be white light shining through red paper because white light, remember what we talked about, it's all of the colors in visible light. Hmm. So when it's shined through red paper, only red is shown on the other side. Uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah. So there's different materials that light can pass through. There's transparent, translucent, and opaque. Transparent means that almost all of the light passes through it. Translucent means that some light passes through. And opaque means barely any light passes through. So some examples of transparent objects would be air, glass, and reading glasses because all of the light is able to get through it. Mm. Some examples of some translu translucent objects would be sunglasses, notebook paper, and stained glass because some light is allowed through, but not all of it. Mm. And that's why sunglasses are useful because that's the point of them, to only let some light go through, not all of it. And opaque means that not much gets through at all. So an example of this would be stone, metal, wood, objects that light really can't pass through mm. because they just absorb it or they reflect it. Um, gotcha. So what we learned today was that key frequency is a key factor to what we are able to see. If it doesn't fall in the range of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, we're not going to be able to see it because our eyes can't pick that up. Hmm. We also learned about the law of reflection, and what that means is how the incident ray equals the reflected ray. All the time, there is a rule, a law, that never changes. We also learned that different materials react to light differently depending on if it's translucent, 
transparent or opaque. And we also learned that objects can absorb, reflect, and tr transmit light. It doesn't always do one. It doesn't always do two. It can do three at the same time if it really wanted to, depending on what the type of object it was. Hmm. And most everything is always doing all three. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, no. I don't think I have any. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.